Now then, rare earth elements, without them we wouldn't have even the most basic of modern technologies. We're taking a closer look at the importance of these elements in a new series here on Al Jazeera. We'll have a report from the main producer, which is China, in just a moment. But first, let's have a quick scientific primer. Rare earth elements, it's a term used to describe a group of 17 metals, most of which most of us never heard of. China mines most of it for the world's technology industry, more than 95%. The rest has been mined in the United States, in Estonia, in India, in Malaysia, and in Brazil, in South America. Those are just a few of the countries where the metals can be found. Mining them is not only complex, but also costly. So many countries are cautious. That may change, however, as demand for these metals is rising. They're a key to the production of a long list of modern day technologies, like smartphones, like electric and hybrid cars, like common computer monitors and televisions. Even military hardware is on the list, like guided missile systems. We begin our series on rare earth elements with this report from China and Al Jazeera's Melissa Chan. What looks like barren land and concentric circles boring deeper and deeper into an open pit. But the locals lovingly call this place Treasure Mountain, and indeed, you're looking at the largest deposit of rare earth minerals in the world. Seventeen metals with names such as scandium, yttrium, and the lanthanoids, needed for the everyday technologies we use, from mobile phones to cars. Without this mine, modern life as we know it wouldn't exist. Mining rare earth minerals is dirty business. So dirty, in fact, that countries with the minerals, such as the United States and Australia, decided against digging for it, thinking that the costs outweighed the benefits. After all, if China was willing to do it, they thought we might as well let them. That was a happy arrangement until earlier this year, when China started reducing export quotas. Then, amid a territorial dispute with Japan, the world's biggest buyer, reports emerged that shipments were being held back. 100%, 100% of our rare earth minerals come from China. That's Yoshio Inagaki, president of Daido Electronics, a maker of magnets that go into laptops. His company and many others here depend on the steady supply of rare earths from China. Without them, their operations come to a complete halt. And what Japan has realized is that complete dependence on China is no longer an option. Japanese government with Japanese company will collaborate together to looking for the, another other countries like uh, Vietnam, Mongolia, and uh, Central Asia, Kazakhstan. Yet consider this. Two of the biggest uses of rare earths are for the electronics and auto industries, and much of that is actually made in China. So for China to want to hold on to its rare earths cash makes sense. In the end, everyone still gets their television set. Crags from the quarry sit by the side of the road, a reminder to everyone in this lonely and cold mining country of their treasure. People here like to say, the Middle East has the oil, but in China, we have rare earths. Melissa Chan, Al Jazeera, Baotou, China.